Hello, this is another video. This is Bonnie and Clyde. Small box, as you can see, and it's uh, by Rio Grande and by Abaca Spieler. So this is a set of games by a designer called uh, Mike Fitzgerald, who has made a kind of mystery series of set uh, of games. This is number five in that set, and it's kind of a reimplantation each time it goes along. And what he has been doing is basically uh, re-implementing Rummy as a game. And the game of Rummy is obviously very popular. The set collection is a sort of the core premise of it. And um, what you're looking to do is, uh, yeah, play cards and score points. Now, in prior versions, obviously it's been a lot closer to Rummy and this has taken it a step further. In fact, this is the furthest step I believe he's taken in, in, in the kind of game of Rummy. Let me try and see if I can have this kind of in shot so it works well. So, in this premise, uh, we're trying to get points by, in my interpretation, I think it's, they could have gone a bit more thematic in, in why you're getting points. But you're getting points for helping the detective. This is the detective actually caught Bonnie and Clyde. So I think a great pub quiz question would be around, uh, you know, what are the last names of Bonnie and Clyde? So it's Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. So we have beautiful cards, which are basically representing locations where we're going to try and find them. Or you could say it's representing their car. And uh, you have Bonnie and you have Clyde here. Well, Clyde and Bonnie. And there are 10 locations here, which represent places where they've basically done something. So I'll let you read it, obviously, when you get a chance to the game yourself. If you want me to zoom in, I can uh, do that. Post on Instagram as well, on the Mass Games. And you can say over here, it's Kansas, Texas, or Kaufman, Texas, in uh, 1932, after a bungled robbery, Bonnie and Clyde try to escape by riding mules across farmland. So in the set of the rest of the cards, you're gonna have locations such as the ones listed here. It's gonna have numbers as well, so four equals four. So these cards are going to be in here. I don't know the distribution. There's 60 of them, there's 10 locations. So I'd imagine, I'm pretty certain there are six of each. So um, I play this as a two player, and it's interesting because if you know someone's got three, then uh, you hope you know you can still get three more, but it's probably unlikely. So this is uh, Ted Hinton, so he's quite well you know, glamorized here as well. So he plays important parts, obviously, in the, in the real life adventures, shall we say, but also in this game as well. So what you're doing initially is, depending on the number of players, so we'll say it's two, you're going to take these two cards, which are going to be shuffled and placed out here. So we're going to grab some other cards and then uh, set up a game board. The idea is potentially to capture Bonnie and or Clyde. Now, just whilst I'm shuffling, I will say, if you happen to get both in one round, then you immediately can uh, get points and everybody else get nothing. It's an interesting game that has grown on us because the first time you play it, or the first round or two, what you end up doing is thinking, okay, you've got some points and I've got some more points, but, uh, you know, was that just down to the cards? But that's why you're playing to, in the standard game, up to 100 points to cause the, the end of the game or 200 if you really want to you know, go for it. I'll show you how points work in a second, but I will say, if you have Bonnie and Clyde, you're gonna get no points that round. Additionally, if someone's ended up with no cards in their hand, so you've been hoarding loads, then any cards you've left in your hand are worth nothing. So it encourages you to be playing cards out. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we know Bonnie and Clyde are in there somewhere. So we're just gonna shuffle these and place them out. Okay, so let's just chuck them out now. And what they say you can do, you can tuck them under or put them on top, as long as you can kind of see and make sure you know where locations are, you're fine. So I talked to you about the game ending when you run out of cards in your hand. So now we get cards each as well. So in a two player, you get 10, you get fewer. If it's a more than that, you might get eight. So, so one, two, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this represents the case file. It's basically the stack that you're drawing from. The discard is called the FBI file. I think they could have called it the archive file. I think that makes more sense. So um, on your first turn, you're gonna draw a card. So I'll say I'm starting, it's mandatory. You must draw a card from the case file. You can draw it from um, the FBI file instead, which is the discard pile, if there was a card. 
so I can see what they're discarding, perhaps, maybe, maybe they don't want it. So I've drawn this, and I've just arranged my cards quickly. So I've got one of them, I'll leave that to the front for a second, because it's an optional thing, you can use a Ted Hinton card. There are 15 in the deck, so you can get, uh, you know, a fair amount of them. And if somebody once got uh, six in that opening hand, but you can only play once in a turn. So I haven't got any sets of three, so in Rummy as well, you need to have three to play something. So that's my aim, basically, is trying to get three out initially, and then I can add to them later on. So I haven't got any extra cards. So what I can do is either play cards or play a Ted Hinton card. Uh, but I can do both, it's just, I can choose the order. So as I haven't got anything to play, I'm going to play a Ted Hinton card. And that's now going to discard, so I could pick it up straight away. I draw two cards. I can instead choose to um, take a card, as I mentioned, from here. Or what I can do is um, basically look under the card, any location. And if it's uh, not Bonnie or Clyde, I can take it. But if it's Bonnie or Clyde, I'll leave it there. But I look at it secretly so nobody else knows what it is because I could leave it and it wasn't Bonnie or Clyde because then they might think it is. So I've got two cards. What do I have? Another dead hint. Well, we know we can't use two in the same round. I haven't got enough threes. And now the last thing I've got to do is discard a card. Now, it's at an advantage to try and have cards where the car is because you get an additional bonus. Basically, the bonus is if you're at the location where Bonnie and Clyde are, you can take the card. If not, you've got to leave it. So ideally, you want to be trying to play stuff that activates your location because you're basically at that location. So I've got two of those. I've got two. I've got, I've got one nine. I'll discard that. So now it's their turn. So now they have a look at their cards and... Uh, you know, we don't know what they're trying to go for. If I can, I'll try and play both sides because therefore you can see what happens when you um, activate stuff. So when you play three cards, it's called a meld for some reason. And the phrase you're more familiar with is layoff. I think it's like bribing off or helping out, you know, a snitch. That's when you place a single card on top of the meld. So basically once you've got a set of three outs. So you're probably at that location, you've been doing stuff, and now you're looking to do something else. So nothing useful there, a nine, Again, uh, we haven't got any nines either. It's playing a two player. Draw a card, it's a six. I think the other person's got a six. That's not useful to us. But they're gonna play a Ted Hinton card. Draw two more cards. Here we go, nine and a nine. Do we have enough nines? We don't, we just discarded one. So I've now got to discard a card. Let's say they discard, let's just make it, uh, yeah, let's say they discard a one, which I think they could do. So they could discard a one because they've got two twos, they've got a three, they've got two fives, yeah. So let's say they wanna get that card further on. And you'll see why it's important, why they might want to just skip the first thing. So um, we now pick up a card, because we can choose to do that all from here, which is a good example. But could play Ted Hinton. So what we're gonna do now is take a card from under any one of these stacks. So we're gonna to choose to take, let, I'll show you why we're doing two and not one in a second. We look at it. And it's Clyde, so it's very useful information to know because one in 10 chance now really does aid us in what we're trying to get. Unfortunately, we don't have enough twos. We've only got two twos. But what we will do is play um, a meld. So we play three cards, so that goes in front of us. We also place it where the car is. So we're basically very close to um, either aiding Ted Hinton or very close to catching them, say. So normally you place cards in front of you like this, that's worth two points each. Now I'm talking about scoring. But if you place it like this, they're worth four points. They're worth four points because you're at the location where the car is. So I'll place these here and we'll score them up later. I then get to look at the location I've just placed. So I look at this location and it's a nine. I can choose to take it or leave it. I'll see if it's useful for me. I've already discarded at a nine. I could be stopping them from getting it, but I'll leave it um, and hope that you know, they're not benefiting again. I think it's a good thing to leave as a nine there. So now what happens, I could discard a card as well, um, is the card automatically moves forward one space. So the way it moves forward, it always moves forward when you play a meld, which is a set of three. So it can only move a maximum of, well, you could say 20 times, but I think 10 is most likely. But when you play a single card, a layoff, it moves either forward one or backward one of your choice. So we'll get onto that in a second, but we now need to discard a card 
Now, I said I could have held on to the other card, kept more cards in my hand, <clears throat> but I'm at an advantage now. I've got more points on the table than they do. So if I can use up my hand, that's a better thing to do. So we know uh, nine is gone. I know I want to keep on to those twos, as an example. Let's discard an eight. So that's their turn. They um, don't need eights, so I'll probably just take one card initially, Ted Hinton. I think to play a Ted Hinton on it, so it's not be worth anything otherwise. And this time I think keep drawing so they can try and play some cards down. So they've got two threes and they've got two tens. Nothing really great, nothing else they can do. Swift turn that one. Let's discard a card. They've got one six. Uh, let's just discard a six. Okay, back to me. And this time I haven't got another one. I can't play it on top. The six doesn't help me. Nope. So I'll take one card off here. It is a six. So I can't do that anymore. I'll play a Ted Hinton to try and draw two more. Try and get a two. No, unfortunately, got more sixes. Um, but I do have enough sixes, so that's good. So I don't have to, but I'm going to choose to play three sixes. This time they're going this way up because the car isn't at that location. So just put them in view slightly. So, and then it moves up again. It must move up when you play the thing. Additionally, remember when you play the location, you look at the card. So look at it secretly and it's a one. I can take it if I want. I do take it. In addition, I can now do an extra action purely because you can play as many of these melds and layoffs as you like. So I'm playing a layoff. So it doesn't go sideways anymore because we're not at one anymore. That's worth two points. Let's put it like that just to keep it together, perhaps. And now I can choose to go forward or backward. Now I've got two twos, I'm hoping they discard a two or I get one and I move back. Because therefore, if I can then play some twos, I look at the location, it is uh, Clyde and I get it. I'll keep going until I've used up the rest of my cards and then that'll trigger in the round or they end their round. They could have, I don't know, six eights. So it looks like they haven't done got very much, but they're waiting, pouncing, and suddenly I'm not getting much. So as it stands, my score will be six, eight, uh, plus the 12 there, so that's 20 points. If I had Clyde, that's an additional 10 points, that's 30 points. If I had Bonnie as well, that's another 10 points. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much um, uh, how the game ends. Final thing is you earn bonus points depending where the car is. So if it's here, you get an extra two bonus points. So I think the game in a two player, as an example, lasts about, um, I'd say about three rounds, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting kind of concept. I like the fact that it's this to and fro and it's you don't know if you're finding that right location, if you're trying to be sneaky and I deliberately try to be too lucky and keep the car at a place where I hoped they wouldn't have enough, say, twos to, to get the benefit. But um, no, uh, another thing to do I, I find is handy is when you get the two cards of Bonnie and Clyde, is how I got the game actually, you um, have them listed just at the um, beginning of the deck. And then at the end of each round, you shuffle, chuck Bonnie and Clyde back in somewhere, and then you're ready to go. So I think 10 was probably best for me. I had some nines, oh, it was 10 in the end. So yeah, long way for that card to get, but the idea is to keep playing out cards to help you yeah, discover stuff. So nice long, uh, long board. Um, the only sort of downside seems to be a bit bendy, but it works, it's quite effective. And uh, it's quite lightweight. So we'll see how much it comes in as in a second. Nice, uh, nice car as well. Interesting box. Rules in all kinds of languages. We'll chuck those all in there. And uh, yeah, small little bundle of package. The bonus points though for where the car ended, uh, we didn't do last time. So this is Bonnie and Clyde, 430 grams. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll be recording another one straight after this. Thank you.